Hey you guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Fremantle vs Sydney game, going through how it was basically not really that high scoring of a fancy game all round. I mean, a lot of just 70s and 60s and 80s, whatever, but no real knockout blows. There was only four guys that went over 100 and only one guy, Luke Parker, went over 103. So yeah, just a very, very weird game. And I mean, my team, the Swans, they got an easy victory in the, well, not an easy victory, but a deserved victory in the end. And I mean, they just smoked them in the first quarter and it was game over. But yeah, before we get into this video, remember to like and subscribe, um, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and there will be a couple more videos today on the Tuesday as I try and record these and get them out to you. But uh, now let's get into the video. So as you can see here, Sarong 102, he just sort of did his job. And that was about it. 11 point last quarter really helped in not exploding. As Sarong was a guy that I looked at, but I was like, I think, um, who did I end up getting for the round 19? I ended up getting Banks and Parrish. So I was happy that Sarong didn't go huge as I ended up winning that um, matchup, I guess, between Parish and uh, um, Sarong, if you want to put it like that. Six-point win, but it doesn't really matter as much in this game. of Six points at the moment is going to be, what, ten ranks maybe for me at this point. Uh, Schultz 101, again, doesn't really matter too much. Omira um, 101 doesn't really matter too much as well, because I think Brody next year is going to fill in that that space as well, so you're going to have almost a competition for places, so I don't think he's as locked down as um, as what he's playing at the moment, as Brody did injure himself, I think, in the VFL or what the Waffle or whatever, um, in the twos. Um, Ryan, six point first quarter, and yeah, just never got going, and ended up on a 98, so he's probably, with the way it's going, Doherty's going to lose his defender stats. That is pretty much known at this point, unless he can gain... Unless he can go 40% defender for the rest of the year, which is unlikely as um, they have a lot of injuries, Carlton's, and he's playing a wing role, so it would take a little bit of a nudge of a lot of players come back in for him to lose that, and I think they'd rather just have um, Hewitt sit rather than hit Doherty go into defence for some reason. But Luke Ryan probably comes more of a um, an asset next year with Doherty losing defence. Um, Dacos, I think, holds defensively maybe not depends on that I think he does hold though and that will really help um in terms of players not I guess losing um status so um Ryan will become a, I think a top seven top eight guy next year because of Doherty uh losing defender status and I think a couple more might lose defender status but we'll have to wait and see on that one Luke Jackson, 88, with Darcy being put on rest for the rest of the season, he certainly is becoming more of an option. Played Sydney, though, and Sydney had no Ruckman, so, I mean, who do Frio play? They played Geelong, Brisbane, West Coast. So, I mean, you could get him for these last three games, but I'm not going to be looking at him, I don't think, as Dunkley, Butters, um, even Sheasel are probably a better... Um, proposition up forward and then also I'm looking at like Sharong and other players in the midfield and not really looking at the likes of uh, Jackson up forward. So Skousty, Young just failed um, in his comeback game. Henry again that forward mid Bricer who was on a ring wing roll really just failed because he wasn't getting the ball as much as those two games on the wing. Um, Wagner actually had a really good game. Uh, for a rookie and got some cash gen, but again, I don't think he'll be used that much or not become that relevant. I think Erasmus is someone that you can look for next year to be relevant. I think he could also take up that last midfielder role and he could be a mid pricer that becomes relevant at around price around 430. So, could he take that step up? We'll have to wait and see, but he's certainly on the watch list. Pierce, Clark, Corbett, Amos, Hamling, Johnson just, again, failed. Um, got subbed out and, yeah, just didn't provide anything. And Ethan Stanley could be... Uh, it's going to be rookie price next year, pretty much. So, could be an option because he's getting more... I think he'll get more time in Frio's actual squad. And I think he'll start the year next year. So, I think he's certainly an option for next year if he's around that 200k or so price. 
as he looked good for, um, I think, on a wing roll at the moment with an 18-point last quarter. For Sydney, it was Luke Parker and Luke Parker basically the whole time. A 13-point last quarter from him, he could have gone about 140, 150 quite easily. But he slowed down as the Swans looked to, I think, slow the game down a little bit in the last quarter. They tried to take chunks out of the game by just a minute there, 50 seconds there, by just passing it, switching it, and then switching it back in the back line. So you'll see some of these numbers, although the backman doesn't look like it, but I think like Mills and some other guys, um, Florent had a couple, I think, late as well here, 14. So you see here in the 21st minute, I think they did a, uh, did a set as well. 26th minute, I think they did a set of switching. You can see here with um, Harry Cunningham, yeah, definitely the 21st minute they did switch it, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you can sort of see how they were inflated a little bit um, by doing that. But Parker 127 was a really good good game and got the 10 coaches votes. We'll get the three Brownlows for this game, I believe. Um, he was just so far ahead of the rest, basically, that um, he put in, I think it was something like nine tackles and three or four marks as well as like 30 odd disposals so it was just an all-round performance uh mills had to get two goals to get to uh 98 but again he's proving that there is scoring there and also he's just he's not doing he's not doing enough that it's like a um that it's like gonna affect him like um steel is steel's almost back to normal numbers whereas mills is still averaging 82 so he's going to be priced at um, 82 is still priced around that 700k or so range. If I look at it here, times 8851, 725k for Mills. And if he goes hundreds in the last five games, 14 times 82 plus 500 divided by 19 times. Um, if he goes at 100 for the rest of the year, he's priced at roughly um, 767k, 768k which um i don't know i think that is green that was green starter price i want to say roughly yeah that was roughly green starter price so i'm looking at that next year and thinking no matter what he does he's basically gonna be under 800k because if we look at 800,000 and then divided by five one he'd have to average 90 and minus Minus like 11.58. He'd have to score, I think, somewhere around 560 or something like that to get, uh, which is an average of 110, just to get that uh, Mills here. Um, 14 times 82. 11, yeah, he'd have to average around 110, 112 to get up to that 800K, which I just don't think is um, there. So I think you will see Mills um, sub 800k for next year and will be somewhere around that 50-60% owned because he's building back into it um, and I do think there is a great potential for him to go and explode next year. Um, it doesn't. Re I think there is just a lot more potential for him to explode. I think um, he could easily go back to that 110 a year mould as we see... Um, we see here, and we look back at 2022, he averaged 111, 2021, he averaged 110, 2020, 74, 75, uh, 74, and 69. So he's had two good years, so I think there is potential for him to go back, and we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Campbell, 95, I think there's some room for him to grow as well. Gordon just had a down game, but unlucky if you captained him. But yeah, he dropped a little bit. Rowbottom, I think there is room for him to explode. There, He is only 22. Um, whether he takes up that full Josh Kennedy type role and can start getting those possessions rather than just having to work on tackling, uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think Heaney will become more lucrative next year if... Um, if we do lose all the forwards that we're going to get, I mean, we're going to gain track from the from the sounds of it in the forward line, and he'll be like 70% owned. But it looks like we're going to lose a lot of the forwards. Uh, Lloyd could easily go back to his best, but we'll have to wait and see. Papley, 77. McDonald, Hayward, Franklin. 
Uh, Warner, 70. I think he's going to get back to his best in a little bit, but um, this just peaks his average a little bit more down. Um, McLean, Florent, Cunningham, McInerney, Fox, Blakey. No one else here really to talk about, so that is the video there and then. A little bit more to talk about, I guess, Mills and next year's planning around who's going to be there, but I think Mills is pretty much destined to be under 800k. And, I mean, if we get a little bit more cap space, like we could, um, I mean, we started the year, I think, 16 mil. So, if we get 16.5, I think mils will be a lot more valuable than uh, what people think. And I think we'll be able to almost start with, um, I think we'll start up with probably a beefy um, midfield or even a beefy defence and then just go from there. But we'll have to wait and see. There's so many plans with that. Um, but yeah, I think Mills will be popular next year, especially if he's going to have average be priced at like 82, 83. I think he'll be very popular. Anyway, that's the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.